sometimes you want peanut butter ice cream sometimes you want vanilla ice cream you just don't know what you're going to be into on any given day but do not ignore your core Tony Lavorio hey, here, and thank you for joining me as always. And recently, we talked about a bunch of exercises that I thought were a waste of time. Many people were like, oh, wow, I never looked at it that way. Other people were like, Simon, you're a bored a-hole. You don't know what you're talking about, which is also true. So I thought, well, if we're going to get interesting information out there, I thought we should also do a bunch of exercises that I think you absolutely should include in your routine. Now, does this mean that you shouldn't be doing other ones? No, you always need to find what works for you. And as long as you're progressive, as long as you're being safe, and as long as you are seeing the goals that you want, you are doing it right. But outside of that... These are 10 exercises you definitely need in your routine. Amazing too, this video is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Thank you for Manscaped.com who do support a lot of my videos. I do massively appreciate it. And do not forget, they have been designed and they have come into this life. So if you ever stare down at your groin or region and decide to yourself, note that looks like a forest, they can help sort it out. And it starts with the Lawnmower 4.0, the main event, which sounds like this. And of course, you can take this and run it around your testicle region and it won't nick or cause you any pain. And let's face it, before you tried one of these things, I know because I've done it, sometimes bad things happen and you just want to die. But there's a bunch of other products as well, including the Weed Whacker, which will help your ear and nose hair. We've got the shears to help you trim all that stuff up. And you even have things like this, the Reviver. Because when you get your hair cut, they put a load of nice things onto it so it smells all lovely jubbly. So why wouldn't you do the same thing with that stuff. Also, if you do click the link in the description below and use the code SIMON20, not only do you get 20% off, but you also get free shipping. So if you wanted to try this stuff out, now is the best time to do it because you save some money and you help your penis. So again, thank you to Manscaped.com for supporting this video. And I tell you, I've told you before, I'll tell you again, I have actually used it because every now and then it does get out of control and not once have I ever gone, oh my God, it absolutely hurt. And I never want to have to experience those days again. Number 10, some kind of core work. Now you're already going, some kind of core, that doesn't help. But I don't want to dictate to you and tell you specifically what to do. You could even do a kettlebell swing. And the reason I like kettlebell swings is because it basically works everything. And if you do engage your core, well, you're going to be engaging your core. But I also understand that some people, well, they don't like doing kettlebell stuff. Because they just don't. That's just how they feel about life. Sometimes you want peanut butter ice cream. Sometimes you want vanilla ice cream. You just don't know what you're going to be into on any given day. Day, but do not ignore your core now i'm not telling you if you do a bunch of core exercises you're going to get abs that's not how it works but it will strengthen your abs it will strengthen your core and the main reason you want to be doing this is because if you strengthen your core it is going to literally help every single other lift that you do because it all kind of comes from your core. You may not think that it does until you've got a crappy weak core and you strengthen it and all of a sudden all those other exercises are doing well. Now the one that I like to go to because it's nice and simple and you can do it anywhere and you can set a little game for yourself is the plank. The other reason the plank is good is because once again it's almost like a mini all, uh, all body workout. But you can do these however long you want to do. You can add them into your gym routine. But you can obviously make goals for yourself in the sense the first time you do a plank you can only do it for 35 seconds. So the next time you do it you think I'm going to do 38 seconds and the next week you say I'm going to do it for 45 seconds and then 10 weeks down the line you're doing it for five minutes anybody that can do a five minute plank as far as I'm concerned is winning life it is damn damn hard and you're going to be wiggling and you're going to be swelling all over the place and while it feels like such a mundane thing to do because you're doing leg day you want to do squats etc etc it really does have a benefit so if you can find a way to get in there do it if you want to do kettlebell swings do it if you want to do yoga do it just make sure you are working your core and i speak from experience i ignored my core for years because it wasn't fun it wasn't a vanity muscle i didn't think i got anything from it and eventually i started to get old and everything hurts so i thought man i better start working my core and stretching and doing all of this and surprise surprise you know treating myself like a car and giving myself maintenance went and worked Number nine, any kind of row. I don't care what it is. You can do dumbbell row. You can do incline rows. You can do barbell rows. You can do machine rows, right? Make sure you have a rowing uh, formula. That's not right. A rowing variation in your routine because it is just such a good and simple way to hit your back muscles. Now, I would always go for the barbell row if we are going to choose one because it's more like a compound exercise, although not really, although we're kind of in the uh, middle ground there. And I think the reason a lot of people don't do barbell rows is because they really struggle with the form. Make sure you are pulling from your lats. Make sure you are pulling from your back. You don't need to stand all the way up. You don't need to be so far down. Your head is just flopping around the place. Obviously, you're going to have to find your own version of this technique because everybody is different. 
different. But I also, well, the two things I see is one, people going too heavy. So they're just lifting with their arms and forearms because they're not even giving their chance of back to kick in. But also two, people aren't taking it slowly enough. So they're not getting that mind-muscle connection. So grab the, the barbell and you can do overhand, underhand. I like doing uh, overhand, overhand. Just do. I've got Versa grips if I need extra grip. And pull it in. Make sure you do this with just the bar. Find that position where if you flex and flare your lats, you can feel your back widen. That's where you want to pull it. And when you are doing your proper sets, hold it for a second or two. Flex, 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 and fight it on the way back down. That is the best way to do it. And unfortunately, in most gyms, what we see is this. That's not that. That looks like you're some kind of robot and you're trying to punch somebody in the face. And I'm not saying you can't do this for a drop down set or a super set. You know, maybe you just want to, you know, wrap it out. We've heard that all the time. Or you can do partials too. But in terms of your 8 to 10 reps, or your 12 to 15 reps, or whatever your window will be, you've got to make sure you're pulling it in, finding that lat, holding that position, fighting it back down, giving it a beat, and doing it again. And then you're going to have a massive back. You're going to have the V taper and everyone's going to love you. Number eight, lunges. Now, I don't like lunges. I hate lunges. I think lunges are terrible. I would rather die than do lunges. But you know why I do do lunges? You do it for what my channel before because they work. And that's why you don't want to do them. Because in any walk of life, ironically, if somebody says, take these two dumbbells and half you know haul it down to the end of the gym then turn around you're like can i just walk there without the weights no you got to do it with the weights now you don't have to do walking lunges or farmers walks whatever we're going to call them i think they're the best to make sure your knee is going onto the floor not a lot just you know gently touch it so you know that you are going all the way down another nice tip as well is with your trailing foot don't ever take it off the ground let it slide along the floor and that creates more tension it creates more friction so it's going to be even harder for you to do it too but you can do you know lunges stood still or you can do lunges you know in, in in the rack whatever works for you but do not skimp on lunges i get it nobody wants to train legs legs suck leg day meme haha ha, funny funny but as soon as you do incorporate lunges and as soon as you do start putting the intensity that you need into them you're going to see such good leg development that i cannot imagine a plan without it now as you have got this far into the video Honestly, you can just go to the gym and do whatever you want. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. But when you get to that more serious side, you're like, man, I need to make some gains. That's when I think it comes into play. Number seven is press-ups. Everyone laughs at press-up. Oh, a diddly little press-up. No, not diddly little press-up. What are you talking about? This is essentially an exercise you can do at home, in the gym, in a parking lot, at your girlfriend's, boyfriend's, wherever you may be. And the better you get at it, the better it's going to serve at all your lists. Because don't forget, all a barbell press is, and yes, we're going to talk about that, is you doing a press-up, but you're focusing on the top bit, right? You're just creating your own bench in a press-up. You should be able to do a bunch of press-ups. It's always going to help you. It just is. Let's say, you know, let's hope not, but the world closes down again everybody was relying on press-ups then they really were and you don't need any fancy pads or anything like that i mean you can do there are benefits to them but get your ass down and start doing press-ups and treat it like a little game again if you can only do five aim to do 10 if you can only do 10 aim to do 20 if you can do 178 try and get to that 200 mark you don't have to do it in one go unless you want to whatever your you know particular challenge will be but i've never met somebody yet that doesn't do a bunch of press-ups in the right time. I'm not saying to do them every day unless that's what you want to do. You don't want to overtrain or anything like that. But more often than not, the people that have the greatest physiques, they have these basic exercises down. And if you say to them, can you do 79 million press-ups? They just do it. And then it actually turns out they're not just relying on the stuff they're doing in the gym. They ensure they get press-ups in there too. So I mean, when you finish your chest session, whatever that may be, push, pull, legs, or you have a specific day for it, just do a bunch of press-ups three sets that's all all you're going to do is getting some extra muscle stimulus and you love that you want to break down the muscle that's what you live for which ties into number five pull-ups for everything i just said i mean for starters everybody wants to do a bunch of pull-ups because i understand the only way to do more pull-ups is to do pull-ups but also two it is a great back exercise that once again you can do everywhere let's refer to the pandemic again because i just saw it there is a pull-up bar on my door right there so i can't go to the gym and i didn't have many weights at first so i thought what can i do to work my back i can do pull -ups. And the coolest stuff about pull-ups, similarly to the press-up, is that you can change around your hand position and that is going to work different angles of your back. It's going to bring your biceps into play and it's going to benefit you overall. Like the trick with all of these, and we'll talk about more of this in a minute, is that you can actually get rid of compound movements once you've built your base. If you find that you're getting injured or your joints are starting to hurt, etc. That's just the, you know, the, the nature of life. Unfortunately, we do, uh, we, we do get injured in that way. But things like pull-ups and press-ups, if you can do them all the time, they are going to serve you way into old age. How many times have you seen those, oh, who's an 85-year-old woman and she's working out? She always does press-ups and she always does pull-ups. And sure, maybe at that point, she's relegated her press-ups to the weird on your not weird at all but on your knees ones and when she's doing pull-ups she's using a stability thing whatever you want to call it some extra weight to get her up there but she's still doing them and i think you should do them too and too often we focus on everything else because we don't think pull-ups are cool 
Here's the secret. Nothing in the gym is cool. You don't look cool. Record yourself and watch yourself back. And a five is Romanian deadlifts. Because you want to work your hamstrings. Of course you do. The hamstring, like the rear delt, has to be one of the most ignored muscle groups in the entire body. I know you want massive quads, but you don't want to work for them. But you also need hamstrings. And that means isolation work. And to me, the best compound-esque movement is the Romanian deadlift, where essentially you are doing a deadlift, but you are keeping those legs straight, not too straight. You want to have a little bend of the knees, otherwise you're just going to wreck yourself. You also don't want to go as heavy as you're going on a deadlift for obvious reasons. This will really focus in on your glutes and your hamstrings. And if you do want to keep it as a light rep, uh, sorry, a lightweight high rep exercise, you absolutely can. But the Romanian deadlift will change your life if you're looking to add size to your legs. I mean it. Like if you just want to do a leg day that consisted of, what have I got here? Squats, lunges, and Romanian deadlifts. I actually think you would see some, well, I think you would see better progress than if you were just sitting on the hamstring machine for ages. And the hamstring machine is great, the hamstring curl. You should use that too. You should double up. But what I always see it all the time is people would rather do the hamstring curl because it's easy or it's easier. I don't want to get the barbell out and put the plates on. You're there to work, Mother Hubbard, all right? <laughs> You're there to ensure that you are putting it in. And sometimes to put it in, you've got to get it out. That doesn't even make any sense, but you have to get out of the bar and you've got to put it down. I ain't asking you to do 100 kilogram, 120 kilogram. Just start with two plates, 220s, 245 pounders on the side and do it. Find that form. Make sure that you are, you know, getting that tension up your hamstring. And then when you start to see that nice bulge in a few weeks, I'm talking about your hamstrings, don't get weird with me. All of a sudden, I promise you, not only will you love the Romania deadlift, but it will help your overall deadlift too. Number four is shoulder press or military press, or whatever you want to call it. Now, this one is a little bit of a humdrum one. The reason I put it in there is because obviously you want to be able to work your shoulders. And you want to make sure you're working them specifically and not just getting sort of secondary work because you're doing bench press or anything like that. And it is a kind of compound, as I say, so it had to go in here somewhere. But I mean, the reason I say this, because I'm a big fan of push-pull legs, right? So I think when you're training shoulders, you kind of do want to isolate them a little bit. You want to do the lateral raises and you want to do uh, front raises or rear delt raises. We've talked about front raises. If you know what I'm saying, you want to make sure that you you hit those um, those different deltoids specifically as opposed to worrying about it overall but given that a lot of people don't do that and they don't have a specific shoulder day or when they are doing push ball legs they go i'm going to slash my triceps i'm going to smash my chest and eh, shoulders i'll just do a little bit which kind of does make sense because they're a smaller muscle group but they're intricate so you do need to make sure that you're doing the right thing so that's why it's in here because i think if you're not going to do any kind of shoulder exercise doing a push press a military press a shoulder press is or just a dumbbell press that would work too although barbell is better just for obvious reasons that's why it's here but it's like on tre treacherous ground but a lot of people do put it in the compound category, which I get because your arms are going to come into play too, so it survives. And yes, at number three is the bench press. Of course, the bench press is really important. It's a mass builder for your chest. Your triceps are also going to kick into gear. Your shoulders are going to be doing stuff, and you're going to have a bunch of stabilizer muscles also ensuring that they are lifting and working and making you feel like you're having the best time ever. There's something else I can say about it. Again, for the next three exercises, you can do them for a long time, build your base and forget about them, or you can keep doing them because a lot of people say their elbows start to hurt with bench press. But ultimately, if you are looking to grow and you're looking to make increases in your size and you are ignoring the bench press because you think a machine press or an isolation machine press is better, I don't think it is. I think you are going to be stagnating a little bit because that is going to isolate your chest more. Whereas if you move across to the bench press, you're going to be working a ton of muscles that you don't don't even realize you are make sure you get your form right you don't have to lift 700 kilograms bring those elbows in etc it doesn't matter if they do flare out a little bit the gym is meant to be hard it's meant to be something you learn and it's meant to be a craft that you get better at but be smart with it because the bench press has become so common so many people lay down and just again it's this it's the robot punching they just try and rep it out even if you've got a low weight on take it slow because the slower you take it and the better your form gets when you do start adding the weight on it's just going to get better and better and better so of course the bench press rocks there's a reason we all talk about it the difference difficult it is never do it on a monday so if you're trying to go to the gym on a monday everyone's doing chest because that's what gym bros do number two is squats now you are going number two is squats then number one is what well it's quite obvious what number one is and the reason i put squats in it too is because again i think maybe more so than number one once you have smashed squats for a few years and once again built that base quite literally in this sense because we're talking about your legs you could probably leave it and never worry about it again because i don't agree with this whole oh it's going to ruin your knees and it's going to ruin your back no only you ruin your knees and you ruin your back so if you're doing a squat and it hurts your knees maybe change the way that you're squatting and it's the same with your back and if you really can't find somewhere that makes you feel good and makes you feel comfortable and makes you feel like you're engaging the muscles as opposed from your bones then just stop squatting it's not the build and end all it's not going to ruin your life now if anyone is actually watching you and going that person comes in and does legs and never does squats they're a maniac 
Like, they're genuinely insane, so ignore them. I would rather you went to the gym and did a bunch of gym exercises you like to work your legs than never work legs at all, which, again, I did too. I got it in my young years. I don't want to work legs. It's not as fun. But the reason why it's so important to work in squats, if you can, is because this is like a mass builder, right? Every single part of your body goes into squats. To the point you're putting it on your back, so that's going to engage. You go all the way down. You lift from your feet. You go through your calves. You go into your legs. And you go all the way up into your shoulders. You really do. You may not be feeling it, but that's how it works, and that's how people. That's why people people are so excited about them or why people love them as much as they do also you know if you do do squats well you will promote a little bit of testosterone around the body which is going to help you we're talking tiny tiny amounts but it's just because it's such a, a heavy and intense exercise but i'm so sick and tired of everyone being like oh man the squat doesn't work change your squat change your squat get rid of all those plates on and figure out what works for you you are a unique human you absolutely rock you kick ass but much as you would in in any walk of life like you know so you sometimes see people doing weird things with a hand with a pen with a knife and fork it's the same with a squat you just need to find what works for you but the main reason i put it in here is because i think maybe people aren't doing squats because they think they can get a similar feeling elsewhere and you can't so once again if you feel like you've hit a plateau and you feel like you need to get over that hump switch back to squats they work and number one is the deadlift. Like, it's interchangeable with the squats in many ways. And actually, you could probably make a better argument for squats being at number one than deadlifts. But I just love them. They're my favorite exercise. And of course, once again, they are a massive mass builder. Think about what you do when you squat. You bend down to the bar, shins against it or shins near to it, whatever works for you. You clasp that thing. You pull up. Uh, you push through your feet again all the way into your back and it will get your sort of upper back and your shoulders and your arms are going to you know sort of be a third or fourth muscle or something like that but it is a great great compound movement it's my favorite compound movement and it's really the only movement i will do super heavy these days i won't go heavy on bench press i won't go heavy on squats because i think they're too well there's too much danger there <laughs> like if you get crushed on a squat you're probably dead and if you get crushed on a bench press probably dead or going to end up in a gym fails video that i'll then watch and react to it nobody wants that look at me i'm an idiot whereas a deadlift if it goes wrong you can just drop it now that doesn't mean you struggle and you do this back nonsense to the point you're going to destroy your back no if you lift something up and it feels too hard i'm not telling you not to be intense you've got to push through but don't do that it means you've gone too hard if you're trying to go to the post office and you walk past it, you don't keep on walking, you go back to the post office, turn around. It's the same with a deadlift, same with any kind of lift. You pick it up and go, this is too heavy. Take off some plates. Nobody cares what you lift. And you're going to get a far better, well, a far safer deadlift by doing it nice and slowly and again, focusing on all these muscle groups. And even if you are going sort of 10% below your super maximum, it's a deadlift. The clue is in the name. You are still going to be getting worth from it. So include these. Always include these or not. Once again, it doesn't really matter. But it's kind of like squats. I can't think of anything else you can do that can replicate this sensation. Now, health and fitness first. Make sure you protect yourself. If it's hurting, don't bother doing it. But I think they're fabu. I think they're wonderful and if I could I'd marry them now please do like the video share the video and subscribe to the bell ding ding so that others are going live leave a comment below maybe you disagree with all of these I'd love to hear it and also throw in your favorite exercises go to mine.com forward slash Simon to get 10% off the entire store I really like this stuff Greg do sets power 13 cookbook my recipes are in that if you want to try some one is for a lovely scone it's gone whatever you want to call it I'm British Instagram and Twitter Simon316 SimonMiller.BigCartel.com for merch I would be on Cameo yes it's back on now so you can get a Cameo from me but ultimately thank you for watching thank you for tuning in and I look forward to talking to you again soon.